guys let's make a chai latte so in here I made a cup of chai tea now my favorite is Bengal spice by celestial seasonings I've talked about that before so this is a very nice strong cup of tea so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this Toriani now this one's sugar-free but you can get regular too salted caramel and it's very tasty so I'm going to put some of that in here oh maybe about a couple teaspoons it's to taste so I'm going to do that and then and this is so easy and they're so expensive when you go to buy them now here I have some soy milk that I heated up in the microwave so I have a little frother here that I'm going to put this in and this is so easy really so I'm going to whip this up I'll be back in a minute I'm sure you don't want to hear that banging around okay beautiful frothed milk soy milk and it, it really whips up nicely so I don't know if you can see this too well or not I'm going to put it at this angle so I'm going to pour all that frothy milk in there Ooh, so yummy and there you go now, I don't know about making a fancy little doodad in there. I haven't done that. But I can give it a try. Nope, not working. But anyway, there you go a yummy chai latte. Cheers! Oh, so good. You got to try this. It's as good as any one you buy in the store. And of course, you can use regular milk if you'd rather do that. All right, I'll be back later with some more money saving tips. Good morning. It's another lovely day. The Lord let me wake up this morning, so it's a good day. Anyway, let's save some money this year at least we'll make a good attempt at it i'm going to so how are we going to do that that's a good question for those of us on a lower income it's not always easy so we have to get creative and one of the easiest ways to save money of course is on our food you know i mean we all like certain foods and we don't need to give up everything either but sometimes we have to get a little creative in what we do like if if you're a meat eater which i'm not um and you like beef maybe uh what i used to do i used to buy the cheap ground meat rather than the ground sirloin or anything like that and I would cook it up and season it and then I would rinse it put it in a colander and rinse it under water to get all the fat out so that was one way that I saved money on food when I had I was a single mom and I had three kids that I had to feed so and um, really the biggest difference in ground beef is the fat content so just wash the fat out i do the same thing uh, or i did the same thing with ground so i would rinse that in a colander under water too and there is no difference in the quality and you can't taste it and it worked out really well um, so that's one way if you if you eat meat where you can save some money now if you're vegetarian or vegan like i am um, making protein uh, is is much cheaper and much easier i've recently started uh, washing my own flour uh, you take um, 
just regular flour or bread flour or you could or you can take whole wheat flour there's there's many tutorials on uh, YouTube on how to do it and um, I've started washing my own flour or you can buy vital wheat gluten if you don't want to do that and it took me actually a long time to start doing that process because I thought oh my god that's so labor intensive but it's really not. It's actually very satisfying to, to do. So um, unless you're gluten intolerant, well, then that's not for you. Then you might want to go the tofu route. And what you can do with that, if you want it to have a more chicken-like texture, you can um, freeze it by the, by the regular tofu and freeze it and thaw it and you can e even do that a couple times and squeeze as much water out of it as you can and it gives it a very almost stringy like chicken texture you know and then you can soak it in whatever um, stock you like so that's just one way if if you're plant-based where you can save money being vegan or vegetarian does not have to be expensive and if you are a meat eater, you really don't need to eat meat every single day of the week to be healthy. I mean, if that's what you like to do, that's fine too, but it's not something that you have to do. You can look at other sources of protein. And many vegetables have a high protein content, things like kale and spinach, the dark le uh, leafy greens, they actually do have protein in them. So become a label reader, do a little bit of research on um, food nutrition, and you don't have to become a dietitian or make it real labor intensive, but if, if you want to be a little bit more health conscious with what you eat, you might want to consider doing that. So once you have a stocked up pantry, which I would recommend you slowly stock up on the things that you like. You know, don't run out and buy rice and beans if you hate rice and beans, but stock up in your pantry with the things you like and store them for a longer term. You don't have to store them for 25 years if you don't want to, but, um, you know, make sure that, um, if you do buy flowers and grains and things, you put them in the freezer for a couple of days. That's to kill any ugh, gross bugs that are in there. But come on, let's face it. You know, we've all eaten a few here and there when we didn't even know it. But anyway, um, and then store them in airtight uh, plastic containers. You don't have to spend a lot of money on containers. I save my containers from nuts um, because I like to eat uh, cashews and I buy those, those at Aldi's all the time. And then when the containers are empty, I, uh, I store my flowers and grains in there. And I've, I've done a whole uh, video on, on my pantry and all the things that I have in there. In fact, I think I've done a couple of them already. But... Um, so you, you don't have to run out and buy all the uh, XO containers and, and stuff unless you can and you want to, that's great. But even mason jars, you can dry can things. Um, all you need is one of those, um, the suction machines. And um, you know, that way your food will last a little longer. Now nuts and uh, like whole wheat flour, things like that, that doesn't have a real long shelf life. That's something that you can look up online too and see, you know, how long you can store it. Now, as far as expiration dates, I know a lot of people are out there and it's like, oh, it's no good. It's the day after it goes in the garbage. I personally don't do that, but if, if that makes you feel you need to do that, then by all means do that. But I personally don't do that. If it still smells good, it doesn't have bugs in it, um, and it doesn't smell funky, um, then I'll usually go ahead and use it. But that's just me. I'm not telling anybody to do that. Little disclaimer here. Um, that's what 
personally I do. So in making your own um, your own coffee drinks, uh, invest in some of the Torani syrups because uh, that's what most of these coffee houses use. Uh, that Monin makes some, Torani makes some. Um, there's a, a skinny something that I've had before. They make some. And uh, in the beginning, it's more of an investment to buy those. You can buy them online. You can buy some flavors at Walmart. Um, they have the basics, vanilla, hazelnut, things like that. Some are sugar-free. Some have sugar, you know, whatever you, whatever you like. But the initial cost of buying those syrups for your coffees and teas is well worth the investment because for two cups of coffee at Starbucks, for the cost of that, you can buy a bottle and have 10, 15, 20 cups, depending on, on how much of the syrup you use. So um, invest in that, in, invest in some uh, the spray whipped cream. They have those now in coconut. If, if you're vegan or vegetarian um, or, you know, just regular dairy. And then you can make yourself a wonderful drink, um, sprinkle a little cinnamon on top, or uh, they have uh, chocolate that you can sprinkle on top. And it's wonderful. And you don't have to run out to the store if it's, you know, midnight and you want a cup of decaf, wonderfully flavored coffee. You go to your coffee machine and you make it. Um, I refill my own coffee pods. Um, it's easy to do and they're easy to clean. And the only time I use coffee pods that um, I buy are when I'm going to have a party or, you know, families coming over. Then I will go ahead and use those. But I usually buy Aldi's brand or I wait until I find some that are on sale. And the Aldi's brand I think are good. You know, they have hazelnut, they have vanilla, they have regular. Actually, Aldi's has a good variety of good coffee. Uh, they have German coffee, um, different roasts, um, and, and they're good. You know, the same thing with wine. Aldi's has very good wine if, if you, um, and, and for a good price too. So if you're a wine drinker, you might want to think about... Um, maybe stocking up on some wine there. Um, now I've got a new project coming up. Now I haven't gotten my ingredients yet. I got some money for Christmas and I already know what I'm going to do with it. Um, there's a tutorial on, on YouTube and I think it's Paw Paw is the name of the channel. It, it's this older fella, really funny, He's a real grassroots, down-to-earth guy. He's, he's older. He's like, I don't know. It's hard to judge how old people are. But, you know, he's got the overalls and everything. And he shows you how to make wine from just plain juice, you know, and yeast. You can use bread yeast. Now, I ordered some wine yeast. It wasn't very expensive. I think you get 10 packets of it and you don't, I don't think you need a whole packet of it. I haven't done this yet. This is another Ellen project. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so anyway, um, you can make your own wine just out of buying some juice. And, and apparently the wine is way stronger than what you would buy at the store. Now I like a sweet wine. Um, I don't know how you make it more dry, but, uh, you know, m my wine, I like it sweet. I love ice wine, and that's about as sweet as you can get. But anyway, um, so you can even make your own wine. I've just been reading today about making hard kombucha, so I want to give that a try, where the kombucha actually, uh, you ferment it, I think, three times, and it becomes alcoholic. Um so that's an option. I haven't tried it. I haven't tasted it. But it, when I make it, I'll, I'll keep you guys informed. Now, I have a lot of kombucha. Last... Oh, sorry, the phone again. Anyway, I was talking about uh, last summer, I made a lot of 
kombucha. I was just playing around trying different things. And, and then life got busy and I kind of forgot about it. So now I have all these uh, containers of kombucha and of course it's all turned to vinegar. So now I'm doing some research on what I can do with kombucha vinegar. And if you make kombucha, if you homebrew your own and it goes too sour, let it go to vinegar. There's lots of things that you can do uh, with the vinegar. You can use it uh, in place of apple cider vinegar. You can make salad dressings. You can use it as a skin tonic. You can use it on your hair. Um, what else? Any, any place where you would use apple cider vinegar, you can use your kombucha vinegar. So um, I'm looking into that and researching that. I've always got something I'm researching. Keeps life interesting. And that's a cheap thing that you can do that doesn't really have to cost you any money. You know, if, if you like to make jewelry, go on YouTube and watch a ton of YouTube videos and, and then, you know, get your own style going. Even if you think, you know, like for me, I like to paint. And even if you think you can't paint anything, you know, there's tons of tons of tutorials on how to paint in any style you want. You know, um, modern art, you know, and, and anybody can pretty much, not to offend anybody that paints modern art, but you know, anybody can paint modern art. I mean, some people just throw paint on a canvas and, you know, call it art or, you know, um, there's, there's tons of things to learn. Life is so interesting. I mean, it's just wonderful. All the things that you can learn and for free, you don't have to pay a penny, you know, go on, join a Facebook group that has similar interests to you. If you like to bake bread, there's sourdough um, societies out there. There's there's kombucha societies out there. There's, um, you know, everything and anything you want to do. If you have a cell phone and you want to learn photography, start off with your cell phone. Take beautiful pictures. You know, you can get a, a cheap editing thing. Uh, there's free ones out there. And you can edit your photos. And, you know, I mean, there there's really almost literally nothing that you can't learn that you can't find on the internet. Very few. I know when I first started out eating plant-based, um, there were a handful of vegan and vegetarian YouTubers out there. I mean, it was literally a handful. And that was about eight years ago. Now there's a ton of them and it is involved in evolved into so much cool stuff that these people come up with. It's, it's just really awesome. So, and if, if another thing that you can do, if you like animals uh, and you can't have one, if you live in an apartment or, you know, for whatever reason you're infirm and you can't take care of an animal, you might want to consider maybe babysitting a friend's dog or cat while they go on vacation or if you can get out and about uh, something free to do is go to a shelter you know these these animals they they are craving human interaction and you can go take them for a walk or you know go pet a cat if you like uh, babies maybe you can volunteer at a hospital and be a baby nanny to to little babies that uh, need some comforting um, or help out at a hospital or go help out at a food bank. You know, that, that would, people always need help or volunteer if you drive, you can drive people around, you know. So there's, there's just so much that you can do to entertain yourself and, and do things that you love so that you can live a really, really rich life and it doesn't have to cost you anything. So those are some of the things that you can do to save money this year, find free things to do. If you're a senior, you can take classes at some of the colleges. They'll let you audit classes. You don't get a grade for it or cr college credit, but if they have the space for you, you can learn anything the college kids learn 
and um, it's it's free. You know, seniors. I mean, some of the things for seniors are not so great. You know, a lot of seniors are struggling. They don't have enough money. They're living under the poverty line, and um, but. There are perks to being a senior, you know, um, and, and that's just one of them. So look around at your community centers. Um, I know in my community with taxes going to be coming up not too far in the uh, future, our community center, it allows you to sign up for free taxes. Um, you have to, you know, of course, wait until they have an opening. But, uh, you know, so there's, there's all kinds of programs out there for seniors. So please, if you're having a problem, reach out and, and, and let people help you. You know, call the, your local maybe police department. Maybe they can head you in the right direction, your senior centers, and, and see what's out there. And if you're a social person, there's, you know, senior groups that you can go there's hiking groups, there's, you know, there's get some friends together and play cards once a week. That's something cheap that you can do. You can play for uh, Monopoly money, you know, or, or get some uh, poker chips that you can use as pretend money. It doesn't always have to cost you an arm and a leg. And then have everybody maybe have a tea or something and everybody bring a tea and maybe a, a sweet or, or something, you know. So there's lots of things that you can do for free that enhance and, and make your life joyful. So um, I want to show you all my kombucha before I go, and uh, I'm going to bottle all my vinegar and take a fresh scoby out and, and make some fresh kombucha, and then in about a week or so, I will have fresh kombucha to drink because I, I I really miss it and it's too expensive to buy in the store and to be honest with you I enjoy my homemade brew much much better than the bottled kombucha so um, uh, I'm going to show you my kombucha and I'll be back in a couple minutes and uh, and we'll say goodbye okay here it is so <clears throat> this is actually my SCOBY hotel where I keep my extra kombucha. This has been vinegar that I've had for a while, it, and it's grown all these SCOBYs all by itself. This was my original brew, and look how big that SCOBY has gotten. It's huge. So I'm not going to keep all these SCOBYs. I'll probably make something else out of it. I've made dog biscuits out of it in the past, and the dogs liked it. And then here I'm making my tea. It's one cup sugar and eight tea bags of black tea. And then I just let it all sit in there together until it cools off. And then I will make my new kombucha. And this one I tried, I tried using a peach mango, which you're really not supposed to use flavored tea bags, but I did. And uh, it's actually made a very nice vinegar here. Um, and it, it has a peachy smell. It doesn't taste like peach, it just tastes like vinegar, but it has a peachy smell. And then this is just a kombucha that I tried um, just making with some sugar. And I don't even know what this one was all about, but it's not pretty, but it's very healthy. So anyway, that's my kombucha, and I will be making some more and that's it for that. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> I have a lot of scobies and a lot of kombucha vinegar there. Um, I wanted to show you guys this too. I've had this for a long time. It's a little microwave rice cooker. And uh, I like basmati rice and I also like jasmine rice. And I put that in the pot. Now today I made one cup of uh, jasmine rice with two cups of water and I like to season my rice so what I do now yesterday I made all that stir-fry so I need some rice to uh, eat with it 
But what I like to do, I'm not a big fan of just plain white rice. I'm, I'm just even plain brown rice. I, I prefer white. But what I do is I make, um, I season my rice right in here. And then um, I can eat it with a stir fry or I can add some frozen veggies to it. Just, you know, the, the mixed veggie thing and an egg and or two and I can make fried rice out of it or you can add whatever protein you want to it too. So um, I cook up some extra rice. Now this is enough for me for a couple meals. One cup will do a couple meals for me. And uh, that's that's another good way where you can um, you can save some money uh, by having rice and pasta and potatoes cooked up in advance and then uh, keeping different sauces available so you can mix and match it with whatever veggies you have. Now you can make your own homemade sauce, you know, use your kombucha vinegar if you have it, um, or you can just use salad dressing. And my go-to salad dressings are, um, I like to have uh, an Italian dressing type dressing I like to have a creamy one. My favorite is ranch um, or a mustard. Honey mustard dressing is good. And that's something that you can also use your kombucha vinegar with. Put some honey and mustard and your kombucha vinegar, or whatever other spices you like, salt and pepper, and you have a wonderful salad dressing. And it's free, you know. So anyway, um, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee, make myself some breakfast, and um, I'll be back next time. All right, my friends. I love you guys, and I want to wish you abundant blessings, and I'll see you next time.